Perfect. everybody what's going on and welcome to today's edition of swag talk of course this is the show we cover the swag inside and out and i am your tour guide around the swag sea wells coming at you and we got a, a, a little something that i want to do man just to have a little fun um you know everybody loves lists i love lists um so i did this on um i did i did a list on swag on swag smoke last week so i decided to do it again and go in more detail um, this time of why I put people where I, where I put them. And um, again, um, this was inspir inspiration from uh, Coach Walker on Tomorrow Leader Sports Network. And y'all make sure y'all check him out. He got a really great show. Um, so I, I, I was, I wanted to borrow it. So um, just, just wanted to put my own little spin on it. So um, this is going to be my top five running backs in the sweat going into this upcoming season. Now, just, you know, some criteria, because you always got to have, have a little criteria. Um, nobody, I, I did not put anybody who's a transfer, so if you got somebody coming in that's, that's a dog, um, they're not going to make this list because I wanted it to be people that played last season in the SWAC. Um, so no incoming freshmen, no transfers, you know, none of that. Um, obviously if I do a top list at the end of the season and that guy comes in and run for 1500 yards, then he going to the top of the list, uh, at least number two. Um, but that's, that was my main thing. Um, and this is going into the season. So, you know, it, last season does, it is taken into account. Um, I'm not going to, it's not a list just straight by stats. Um, but everybody who's on this list is a productive back. Um, there may be a couple who, I'm, I I may rate higher than others, and that's fine, man. So just you know, hit me up with your your thoughts in the comments of, of, of your top five or who I snuff off, and I'm gonna do an honorable mention too. So I I, I could have did a top ten, but I wanted to do five, and I still ended up doing like nine because I can't follow instructions. So um, man, with that being said, y'all make sure y'all check out the socials. Uh, they're on the screen down below. Facebook is Swag Talk, Twitter Swag Talk seventy six, Instagram Swag Talk. Um, Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're making that march up to 900. So, man, y'all continue to hit that subscription button and hit that like button too while you're here, man. Like this, like the video. Definitely like it. Uh, you can share it all, as much as you want and and hit that notification bell, man, to be alerted to anything that comes comes through. So, we're gonna um, start off this list with our. Um, we're gonna go from five to one. And then uh, before number one, I, I'll give my honorable mentions. Um, starting at the number five spot is Mr. Floyd Chalk. He was a freshman running back at Grambling last season. Um, I, obviously, he didn't get a lot of carries, man. He he, th and this may be maybe some recency bias. It may be some bias because he he, he damaged my team. But I think this guy is a very Really, he has the potential to be a great running back. Um, he's like a bowling ball. Uh, he's hard to bring down. Um, hopefully this season he gets more touches. Last season he only had 69 carries on the season. He uh, ended up running for 420 yards. So he averaged 6.1 yards per carry. Very productive in his, in his minimal carries. And, you know, that's one of the things that you look for in the back. You know, if I give him the ball a couple of times, is he going to hit, you know, he's going to hit for a couple of big plays for me. Uh, is he just not going to, you know, is he just going to be slow and steady, slow and steady? And he had a mix. Um, his season high was 115 yards um, against Southern. Uh, so that's a, you know, that's a big game. You know, he he was kind of pressed in the service because Maurice Washington went down. And he, he carried that team uh, in the run game until they decided they wanted to throw the ball. So um, he broke, he had 
two or three really long runs, including a 44-yarder, um, which was his season long. Uh, he, had, he broke multiple tackles. Just, you know, really, really made a lot of plays in, in that game. Um, average 15 yards per carry in that game as well. So you can't ask for <laughs> ask for much more production than that. Um, like I said, he didn't get a lot of carries this this past season. So I'm I'm hopeful that he can take another step and be that lead back. Now, obviously, they got Deuce Williams. Um, shout out to Baton Rouge. Got Deuce Williams, the uh, young guy, also battling for some carries. But you know, right now. And I love Deuce Williams, man. I, I, that's another kid I've watched play ball since, you know, since, since he got into high school. But right now, I think Floyd Chalk is a guy who can definitely be that 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 workhorse. And they can make a good thunder and lightning combo um, if you if you were to run your offense like that. So that's that's my number five, man. You know, and like I said, it may be some recency bias. Well, I mean, as recent as recent as the last couple of weeks of the se- of the season, which was a few months ago, but it it could be you know one of them you know it, it stood out more to me because he exploded against my team, or it could just be the fact that I, I really think that he is in line for a, a a great season now. Like I said, he's gonna be splitting carries with a few backs, so I didn't really like the way they handled their rotations on backs last season. So hopefully that improves. Um, and the hot hand gets a lot of carries. So his production is obviously going to be predicated on his usage. And um, where he finishes on this list is all going to be up to, honestly, up to what staff does with him. So I wanted to give him that shout out right now, and that's why I put him at the number five spot. Now, four, three, and two can be, in. you know, they can be shuffled. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm open to Somebody saying my number four could be number two. Um, my number one is clear cut, so I'm not even I'm not even gonna 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 sweat that. But my number four guy is Donovan Eaglin from Alabama State. Now this is the, this is a guy last season who was the definition of coming on strong. Um, the first few games of the season, he didn't really get a lot of carries. Um, didn't really get a lot of a lot of numbers. Um, he finished the season was 171 carries for 873 yards. Uh, he ran uh, for 5.1 yards per carry with six touchdowns. So really productive um, in the last few weeks of the season. He had four 100-yard games last season, including three in a row. So, you know, he hit a stretch where he was, you know, really running the ball well. Um, he had a career-high game or a season-high game of 190 yards and two touchdowns against the Thune Cookman. Um, he had 100 yards in four of his last seven games. So, like I said, he didn't really get a lot of action early, but once he started to um, come on strong uh, with, it, with, it, with his, with his uh, numbers, the offense got better, and they won a few of those games that he had, you know, really solid uh, numbers running in. So, he, he, like I said, he's a guy who um, can be counted on to carry the ball. Now he he didn't he he did not really break a lot of long runs. Um he his longest run was 26 yards. So he he really he really was more of a you know a, a steamroller type of guy. You know, get your yardage, get your first down, but he wasn't really a huge big play guy, you know, explosive as you can see with the 26 yard long. Um he did carry the ball 20 plus times, five times this in the season. <clears throat> and to me, that's a workhorse guy. You know, nowadays you don't see a lot of backs get, you know, 20 carries, um, some top out at 15. But to know you got a guy that you can get a ball to 20 plus times and he can continue to pick up yardage and get stronger as the game goes on, that's great for closing the door on another team, you know, knowing that you got a guy that you can get a ball to and he can make things happen um, for you in, in that instance. So he he's that type of guy. Um, I you know I expect more from him because the offense is um, still going to be up and down um, until they get the quarterback settled. So having a guy that you can count on to to help you out is definitely going to be a, a very dependable guy. My number three guy is Ladarius Owens from Texas Southern. Now this guy put, could probably have greater numbers than he did. But he was a part of a backfield 
that was like a three-headed monster. Uh, you had Andrew Body who carried the ball um, and actually led the team in rushing. And you had Ja'Cory Howard, who also carried the ball well. Howard was the power guy, Owens the speed guy. Um, so his numbers aren't super flashy, but they were really solid. 123 carries for 661 yards, uh, 5.4 yards per carry, and five touchdowns. He only had one 100-yard uh, game, 100-yard game, but he did have uh, – he did average four yards per carry or more seven times. So he's definitely a guy that no matter, you know, how many carries he gets, how many yards he gets, he's going to be productive for you. And, you know, like I said, with a backfield that's crowded, you know, your, your touches are going to be minimized. But if you can be efficient, then you're going to get those carries when you need them. And he had a um, uh, um, season high 105 yards against Gramlin. And he averaged 9.4 yards per carry against North Texas. He had 10 carries for 94 yards, so almost a 100-yard game against North Texas. So really, you know, that's great numbers in an FBS game that, you know, TSU was in that game for most of it. Um, he also, um, like I said, because they, you know, because they got a crowded backfield and quarterback, that's a runner, um, a dual-threat guy. Um, his carries are limited, so he didn't have any uh, games where he carried the ball more than 20 times. But he's got a guy who can break a big run for you. Um, he may not always get the touchdown because you got a bruiser that can carry the ball and you got a quarterback that can carry the ball. So he may not always get the touchdowns, but he's going to get the yardage. And, you know, he can break a big run that can extend the drive and maybe even break open a game. So, um I know, you know, a lot of people may not talk about Ladarius Owens, but uh, in 2021, he had a 100-yard game against Jackson State, um, which, you know, they were one of the few teams that year that was able to even run the ball against Jackson State. So, you know, he showed that he could he could show up in big moments. Um, if you let him carry the ball, um, I think you'll get a lot from him, but it's hard to take carries away from everybody else in that backfield. But I feel like he made the most of what he got, um, and he put up some really solid numbers. Now, my number two guy um, may not be anybody's number two guy um, just because last season he wasn't that productive, but he's a guy who <laughs> played at Valley, and I'm talking about Caleb Johnson. Um, he, if you if you, if you you watched Swag Talk before, you probably heard me say he's my favorite running back in the conference, um, especially the last, you know, the, the, the season before. Uh, had a uh, thousand yard season the year before. Um, the offense was very stagnant last year at Valley, so um, that nobody's numbers were good. And he also missed a couple games um, last season, so he only played in nine games. Uh, he, and he had a, 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 a seventy nine yards was his season high on the ground. Um, finished with one hundred and forty four carries, five hundred twenty four yards, uh, two touchdowns, and he averaged three point six yards per carry. Now, like I said, the offense was just not good. Uh, but he's a guy who can carry that load. I mean, he had a thousand yard season for Valley last year when Valley, you know, is not, you know, Valley hasn't been good in a long time, but he was a bright spot on the offense the year before. Um, the offense didn't really take a step forward at all last season. So, um, you know, it, it, your numbers are just not going to be the, uh, you're starting, you know, starting off when you start an offensive lineman breaks his leg early in the season, that hurts your, your line play. You know, it was a lot of factors, but I think this is a guy going in, going into Prairie View, which is where he transferred to. He's going to have an opportunity to carry the ball. Now, he's going to another place with a crowded back. He's going to a place with a crowded backfield, but they're not afraid to give people carries. So I would, you know, I, I would I would look for him to put up some some solid numbers at, at Prairie View. He may not put up, you know, a thousand yards again. Um, he may finish in that five, six hundred yard range again, but. His yards per carry is probably going to be better. Um, I don't know if they're going to be as run heavy as they were last season, but I you I would expect him to flourish with this team. Um, you know, a change of scenery, breath, breath of fresh air um, could could do him well. So as long as he stays healthy, um, he's going to be a top back in the league. And like I said, you know, if you look at his numbers uh, last season, you may not want to see him at that spot, but it's my list. So, you know, I do a little personal preference. I still feel like he's worthy. Um, and he's going to have an opportunity to prove that uh, this upcoming season. Now, moving on to our honorable mentions before we get to 
our um our number one guy. Uh, honorable mentions. Um, all of these guys play on well. The bulk of these guys play on teams with crowded backfields, so they don't necessarily have the greatest numbers. But these are guys who, in previous years, were really good or are just they're, they're just talented, and you know they could have a breakout season. But it's mainly because these guys have all produced either last season or the year before. Uh, they just, you know, they just did that. They just did not have a, a, as great a season last year for me to put them in that in that range in that in that top five. Now, any of these guys could have been in that top five, but you know, they missed the cut. Uh, I'm gonna now. I'm gonna start off with this guy, um, Gerard Sims from Southern. Now, some people don't feel like he's the best back at Southern. Um, I I like Carl Ligon. Um, he's a he was a freshman last season. Actually, actually finished with more yards than Sims. But Sims is a bruiser. He's a guy that can get that short yardage for you. He, you know, he doesn't have great speed, but he can, you know, he can break a break a break a carry. Uh, his long was 52 last season. Um, he's a guy that you can get a ball to 15, 15, 20 times. Uh, last season his his high was 15, but in previous years he was able to carry the ball. Now he's been banged up, um, and you know that's that hampers your production. And playing in the backfield, that's that's gonna be um, have three, four guys who are gonna carry the ball. Your numbers may not be great, but this is a guy I think that you can have as your main guy. He can catch the ball in the backfield as well, um, so that's an added dimension for him out of out of the group of guys that's in that backfield. Now, like I said, I I like Legan, but I put Sims on this list because he's my wife's favorite running back, so I figure I, I'll give her that that. Uh, <laughs> That that uh, little olive branch right there. So, so that's why Sims is on my list. I like Gerard Sims. Don't get me wrong. Um, I just think Le- Ligon is a young a young guy um, that's gonna get better and better as he gets bigger and stronger. But Sims is a guy that you can count on to get you get you yardage. You know he's gonna churn out yards um, and he's gonna make you know gonna make some things happen um, whenever he's on the field. Um, our, our next guy is a guy who. Is more than capable of being a star, and if he played anywhere else, um, he would be a star because he he was he was a guy who was um, at the top of the heap uh, in in previous years, but he ultimately ended up kind of getting getting overshadowed um, by a, a back who just exploded last season, and that's Nico Duffy from Alcorn. Um, like I said, this guy was a, you know he was a starter. Um, you know he had. Um, Two seasons of 800 plus yards, um, so definitely a guy who um, could carry the ball. Uh, 2019, he had 835 yards and six touchdowns, average 5.2 yards per carry. Um, 2021, he had 154 carries for 817 yards, uh, 5.3 yards per carry, and four touchdowns. He also is a guy that can catch the ball in the backfield. He had 227 yards in 2019, 101 in 20, 2021. Uh, three touchdowns receiving in his career. Um, his numbers took a step back mainly because because the emergence of Jarvion Howard. So you know he, he you know he's gonna be a guy that they're gonna try to get more you know get more touches, um, get get him more touches whether you know it's putting him in a slot, um, you know giving him jet sweeps or get, you know just screen passes and things like that. He he's too talented to not to not get the ball in his hands. So I, you know, I fully expect for him to, you know, to make that 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 impact on his team. When you got a guy that ran ran the ball for twelve hundred yards and aiming for two thousand this season, your carries are, are going to be limited. I mean, he only had uh, three games where he carried the ball double digit times. Um, so he didn't, you know, he didn't really have a have any any like really high 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 number games. Uh, his high his, actually his season high in yardage was sixty one against Magnese. Oh uh, yeah, 14 carries for 61 yards and 4.4 yards per carry, and his only touchdown last season. So, you know, I expect them to get him more touches, um, and and how he produces with those touches is, is gonna be the key to to his success and all corn success. So, you know, that's why he that's why he's honorable mention. Um, I could have easily had him in my top five. He's another guy who. Could easily be in the top five, you know. Um, sometimes you gotta, you know, sometimes you gotta kind of move people around because you know he didn't have the greatest numbers 
but he's more than capable of of, of doing the job. I mean, you know, he, he can he can carry the load for our point if he needed to. Um, and you know, he's proven that. So, you know, because he didn't really, you know, didn't get the the touches last season, I put him on honorable mention. Um, a name that a lot of people may not may not put on is um Amar Antoine from Prairie View. Again, Prairie View was a three-headed monster with Jaden Stewart, uh Trezon Connolly, and Antoine. Antoine actually had um he had a breakout season last season. Um he was a guy who, you know, who got carries here and there. Um 2019, he had 10 carries for 48 yards in the touchdown. Uh 2020, he had nine carries for 28 yards and a touchdown. Um 20, 2021, he had 41 car 44 carries, 172 yards and a touchdown. And then this past season, he he had 102 carries for 586 yards and six touchdowns. Um, you know, the, like I said, the offense exploded with the run game, and he was definitely a beneficiary of it. Um, he had uh, one game over 100 yards against Lamar, uh, seven carries, 100 yards, one touchdown, 14.3 yards per carry. Um, against Gramlin, he had 16 for 92. 5.8 yards per carry against Alabama State, 12 for 66, five and a half yards per carry. Against Incarnate Wordy at 14 for 86 uh, and two touchdowns average, 6.1 yards per carry. So he was very productive. And against Texas Southern, he had 22 carries for 86, 86 yards and a touchdown. Uh, so he was a guy who his carries kind of went down as the season went on. Um, but he definitely was a guy who – could 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 tote that load now. Like I said, his backfield is a little crowded, so you know you probably see similar numbers um, to that. But definitely a guy who could make that top five list. Um, could make it if you know if he was the guy. Uh, last honorable mention is uh, Jacory Merritt uh, from Alabama State. Um, another guy who, what I I really feel like this guy was not used properly. By his previous, by his by his team last season, I really think he could have put up a lot better numbers. I mean, a whole, I mean, a running game as a whole could have been a lot better. Um, that left a lot to be desired. Um, so you know, it wasn't just him, but you got a, you know, you had a guy like Santo Dunn who didn't get a, didn't get the carries that he probably should have got. Um, then you had another guy like Jawan Hall who you know was a guy who was more of a short yardage type guy. So. A lot of carries to go around. Um, Merritt still uh, finished uh, leading the team with 470 yards on the season, um, 120 carries, and four touchdowns, uh, average 3.9 yards per carry on the season. So definitely a guy who can, you know, who can make some things happen. Uh, he had 143 yards against Prairie View on 17 carries, average 8.4 yards per carry. Uh, didn't get in the end zone, but this offense did not get in the end zone very often. Uh, last season as a whole, but uh, he did um, he did score a touchdown in the MIAC Swag Challenge. Uh, he had two touchdowns in that baffling loss to Pine Bluff where he had 17 carries for 91 yards. That was his second best game. Um, he was kind of invisible um, for stretches of the season, 9 for 20 against FAMU, uh, 10 for 45 against Bethune-Cookman, 7 for 17 against Alabama a and 11 for 39 against Valley, uh, six for nine uh, against Jackson State, 11 for 19 against Texas Southern, um, nine for 12 against Miles, um, and eight for eight for 20 against UCLA. So, you know, he, you know, he can, you know, not necessarily his fault, but he's a guy who can kind of go missing in a game. Um, but he has the ability um, to make things happen, and he runs a lot bigger than his size. You know, when they uh, had Ezra Gray, he was more of the power guy out of the two of them, even though they were roughly the same height. Um, well, I mean, he may be an inch or two taller than Gray, but, you know, they were both, you know, guys who were on the shorter side, but he was more of a, a guy who can, you know, break tackles and run, you know, run between the tackles for you and, and make things happen like that. So, I, you know, they have a new offensive coordinator. You know, they, they want to try to be better on the offensive side of the ball. I was I would say it starts with him. I mean, obviously Davis at quarterback is a factor, but having a guy that can carry the ball for you consistently is very vital. So 
I, I expect for him to be more productive. And again, could be a guy that cracked crack the top five at the end of the season. Um, my number one is, is Agent Zero, Jarvion Howard, Alcorn. Um, last season ran the ball for 1,275 yards. Um, had um, 219 carries, so he definitely was a workhorse. Um, a guy who was going to Tote the load for you, and uh, you know, Alcorn put the ball in his hands. You know, put put the backpack on him and, and let him go to work. And he is a guy who can do that. You know, I mean, he definitely proved himself to be a, a, a workhorse type of back. Um, in ten of his eleven games, he carried the ball twenty plus times. Um, so he, you know, he was a guy who he runs hard. And, you know, like they said, they, they they say he's gotten faster and even stronger this season. So he's aiming for 2,000 yards. But he's a guy that runs hard. Um, it's hard for guys to get him on the ground if he gets ahead of steam. Um, average 5.1 yards per carry, even with all those carries. Uh, he had uh, 12 touchdowns and uh, six, six 100-yard games, including three in a row. Had a season high of 299 yards against Pine Bluff. And four touchdowns with a long of 78. Um, he is my preseason player of the year in the, in the SWAC. Um, you know, I know running backs don't really get that hype. You know, quarterbacks really always get that hype. But this guy could potentially crack 2,000 yards if he can have, you know, some, you know, a, a few 150, 175, 185 games, you know, and get himself there. But you know, sharing the backfield with Nico Duffy and they want to get him more touches. I don't know if he's going to make it there, but 1,500 is definitely a great number. Um, he should eclip he should at least equal his 1,200 from last season. Um, anything else to me is, is gravy. Like I said, this is a guy that just, just, you can feed him. You can feed him and feed him and feed him and feed him, and he's going to get the job done for you. So I enjoy watching him run. Um, I've never seen a back that made me more nervous on a one yard run um, than him. I mean, he hits the hole at full force and you really feel like he's going to bust out the other side every time he carries the ball. So that's my number one guy. Those are my top five running backs plus four um, going into the 2023 season. Um, if there was a guy who you think should have been on the list, let me know. Uh, if it's a guy on the list who probably shouldn't be on the list, let me know. Um, if a guy on the list is not there anymore, let me know because, you know, like I said, we don't really work with updated rosters. They don't – nobody puts out spring rosters. So you kind of got to look at things and, you know, and kind of, you know, if you hear something about somebody, you know, then you know which way to go. But at the same time, you're kind of operating on, you know, operating on what – what information you can find. So if somebody's on the list who's not there, um, let me know. And, you know, you can put somebody else in their spot. So that's going to do it for today's show, man. Like I said, thank you for tuning in. Um, we'll be back tomorrow with Swag Smoke Live, uh, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. And then we'll be back on Sunday with Swag Talk. Um, don't know what we're going <laughs> to, don't know what we're going to cover yet, but we'll, we'll cover something. So with that being said, man, I'm your tour guide around the Swag Sea Wells. And I'm signing out, man. Y'all enjoy the rest of y'all hump day, and we'll catch y'all on the rebound. Peace.